was in the heart of it Where it all happened In the dark of it I'm talking all the crap it. Do I ever miss a block? Man, they all ass it. I think it's heaven at the top Till it all crashes I was functioning with the rest Cause I was one of them Look, every soldier around Kept a gun on them Everything looking for them Running up on them I got some pictures in my mind I could never post them It was explosive Every day we made a show of it Tried to get rich and die Trying, had to go for it The generation of the killer Made you know of it But it's hard to be proud when you're grown from it The clear wrong of it, it seemed right then A fraternity of brothers stay fighting For respect and a disrespectful environment Damn the danger in the trenches, what's in sight then? Life is the kill, at least that's how we move And your word written deal has to show and prove And the strikes we approve was a stepping stool The network grew, so did the investment grew I was in the heart of it, where it all happened In the dark of it, I'm talking all the crap it. Do I ever miss a block, man, they all ass it. I think it's heaven at the top till it all crash. Man, I'm a real joint. No tall tale. Off Kansas, respected on Hardale. I hung up my chest, but shit wasn't sitting well. My conscience. The gangster, and I am your host, Ascari Abdul Muntakam. And I am here with my co host, Mr. Michael Hall. Uh, better known, or I should say, the artist formerly known as Baby Duck from West Side Detroit Gangster Crip. So <laughs> that <is, laughs> today, that's that's Deacon Michael right there. So that's that's Deacon. What, what's the name of your church, man? Give a shout out to your church. What's the name of your church? Uh, the name of my church is Mount Allah, uh, Church of God in Christ, that's Christ that's Holiness. You say Mount Mount Allah, Mount Mount Allah. Church of Christ Holiness. Okay, so yeah, that's Deacon Michael from Mount Olive Church of Christ, right there. Also known, better known as, formerly known as, some kind of known as Baby Duck from West Side Atrium. You just and you just want to get that in there, huh? <laughs> well, some want, type of way. Huh? Yeah, I, I want the people to know, man. They, they, they gotta know that like, who they talking to, man, because they be like, All right. is, who is who is this old ass dude up here, man? I'm you about know? Deacon Hall. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> okay so uh, uh today we're going to be doing a continuation interview um with uh M mr uh damian williams or little football and, um, or little dame or mujahid all the different names that we call him by yes um uh, we're going to delve into some 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 serious stuff and ask some serious questions and um Try to understand the mindset of 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 of, of, of Damien um, as he grew as a man, you know, and also the effects that um, um, becoming a, a a gangster had 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 on him in his life. We're gonna you know try to delve into those particular uh, areas. So, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, how are you, Mujahid? Wa I'm, uh, I'm real well, and I'm just grateful to, to be alive, to be a see another day, because somewhere, someplace, somebody wasn't able to wake up this morning. So, as I always say, so I'm be well, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so um, when we left off, um, I guess we were talking about, um, uh, you know, right after the riot, right after the rise, things were going down, and you, you all were out um, pillaging. Uh, the, the the earth, so to speak. Um, um, but what we want to talk about now is is kind of um, first of all, I want I want to go back and, and talk about this. Let me let me let me let me let me start here. Um, everybody that comes into the set, right, comes in. Um, everybody has a different story. Everybody got there a different way. Some brothers, you know, they they you know their their legacy, right? They like you know your your brother was 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 big football, so. You you had a, a different um, legacy than than for example me. I came to California in 1982 when I was 12, um, and so I was a transplant. So you know I was always running around with that kind of inferiority complex, you know, throughout the set because you know I I I wasn't I didn't grow up here, so you know I always felt that. Um, and everybody has different stories about how they come into the set and who they become and who we are when we enter the set when we when we get put on is never who we ultimately end up being so i want to talk uh, about who you were like coming into the set um uh, i want to talk about um and how you grew what you grew into and 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 that kind of thing so that people the listeners can be informed about you know this this lifestyle this 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 insane lifestyle that that that, that many of us had uh, adopted in 
and taking on and 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 what it does to you and um and all the different things and all even the joys right because it's, it's great joys you know even to this day all of us you know we're still connected to the people who we, you know we bang with um and you know we still have love for them and you know and you know i was sitting over a little stony's house uh the other day you know we were you know sitting around we was watching tv and you know, drinking orange juice um because because there is a connection there you know um um so but let me ask you this so um there was a time when you was you weren't an H-Ray gangster, right? Now, were you were you ever a part of any other, you know, set click or anything like that, like you know, the, the Seven One Hustlers, or you know, were you ever part of anything other than H-Ray gangster? Yeah, I was, I was a part of Seven One Hustler, which was a click that started on the block that I grew up on with a lot of the neighborhood kids. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. So it became a click known as the Seven One Hustler. So, well, are you saying this was a click of H. Ray Gangster, or was it a click? Um, what was it? What did you all consider yourself ETGs? What did y'all? What? How did? How did that come about? So none, none of us was H. Ray Gangsters when we was playing the Seven One. We were just all Seven One Hustlers. None of us had. Became gang members at that time. We was still young, we were in the early like 81, 82. And so we all, you know, would ride bikes, hustle, you know, do little things, work at the gas station, uh, sell bikes and things of that nature as we grew older. And then the game came. So when the game came in the 80s, a lot of us came into the game and we started hustling and we started selling drugs, we started selling crack, we started selling weed and things in like 85. And that's when we start seeing uh, the other side of the coin, which is the crypt. Because a lot of them was coming over there. Like I said, I had grew up on 71st. My brother was a gang member. So a lot of the older loved ones, like Big Goofy, like Lil Spike, uh, you know, so forth, that they used to all come on the block and be with my brother and be with my other extended family that my mother was took care of when she was on the block. So all the dudes would come over here and we would see them. And then that's how we started catching on to what they were doing as well. And then eventually, like a year later, I made that transition from 7-1 Hustler to 8 3 Gangster. What, what year was that that you made transition from 7-1 Hustler to, to 8 3 Gangster? Between 85 and 86. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. So um now now as you oh, let me say this. Let me let me rephrase it. Let me rephrase that. I called myself that at that time. I called myself an age forget I wasn't actually put on, but I was around open all and all open right. back. I think Snowman was Snowman <laughs> Bernard. Shout out to Snowman Bernard. <laughs> That's my dude, man. So so uh little football. Yes. So so basically you was claiming back there back then you was claiming the set but you really wasn't from the set exactly that's the right 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 because right. we all we all went through that period that's why i asked you that right we all got that 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 that, that period of time and that's what people are like you know particularly the people who are not familiar with gang culture need to understand that they, that's that's how it happens with gang members that they come in first they, they, they call wannabes like you're a wannabe you you you, you, right. you want to be from the set but you're not you've never been put on you know you, you're not official you're you know you're just some some dude that's maybe in the neighborhood maybe you're hanging out with people but you you you're not you're, you're not yet put on um and so you know there's, there's always that phase um and there's some people who transition from the wannabe phase to an actual gangster without actually being put on the set actually without getting quartered on the set right that happens too you know where they because they just been around for long enough uh where everybody just accept them and they just become whoever they become now everybody 
well, I don't know everybody, but I was talking to little Stoney about this. Like, like most people, um, they're whatever they are now, they weren't then, right? They their names weren't the same, right? They always come in and, and people With call a different them. name. Exactly. And then, then their name changed because you know somebody else say, okay, I want this dude to be my little homie or whatever, blah, right. blah, blah. So, so little Dame, what was your name when you were from 71 Hustler? E money. E money. E money. All right. Yeah. Oh, you say D money. Okay, D money. D money. Oh, D money. Oh, all right. Yeah, D money. So at that time, that's what a lot of hustling man. Everybody wanted a lot of money behind me. We was getting money at a young age. So I was uh, D money. Big uh, T was T money. K Dog was K money. And a lot of these dudes end up turning into a as well. That was on seventy first. A, a player still the current day play like me, Big K Dog, uh, Lil BJ. I mean Big BJ. You know Lil BJ did too. Uh, Lil Troop, Big Troop. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Uh, Lil Mohead, all of us end up turning north side and try gangsta like back to back over the office seventy first. Okay. All right. Hmm. All right, so let's delve into some of this this, this mindset of uh, business that, that that goes on with with being a trade gangster. Um, so, um, what what happens is you know like what what happens with us is is that we we come in, we 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 gradually get we get to that 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 stage where you know you you're, you're too much, right? Um, but that's a gradual thing. And like for me, I always tell people all the time when I was when I was when I first you know got put on, I was scary as hell, right? I, I was scared of my own shadow. Um, <laughs> but I would um, you know I would fight, but I was scared to fight, and I was I was everything was everything was was frightening to me, right? Um, and that came from my childhood where 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 I used to be you know physically abused in my household, um, and and the whole world was frightening to me. Um, but you know, then there came a time when 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 that changed, and that actually didn't change until I was in YA. Where, you know, out there, I kept getting you know, little little Chris and, and and you know, uh, um, um, little Huck. Well, you know, we're there and all that, and they wasn't going for no scary homies. You know, that that was out. <laughs> Who was not going for no? I mean, <laughs> like, hey, they used to threaten to, to kick you off the set of every every other week. You know, we, I was there with little <laughs> and, and uh, little Hunchy. You know, and all. It, it meant like they used to maybe send us letters all the time. And yo, what y'all doing, man? Who, you know, who y'all done got to, to this week or something? <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> better, better step this up, right? So, um, all right. So, uh, give us a call back a little bit when you when when it goes off. But uh, what I want to ask is, um, that 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 those those phrases. Talk to people about the times when you weren't. Um, the dude you are now. You didn't have the courage that you have now. You didn't have the life experience, and you were just trying to find your way. You know, when we come back, I want to talk about that. Okay, indeed, I have a problem with it. So, but before before I even joined the game, before I even became a hustler, you know, I was big into sports. I grew up playing football. I grew up playing baseball. I grew up in the boxing gym with Scrap Iron Johnson, which was a trainer that passed away that I met daily. So I had great expectations of making it to the NFL are playing pro basketball baseball or becoming a pro boxer because I wanted to do that for my mother to get my mother up out of the neighborhood and give her a break because damn yeah, she was all right. We'll continue that 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 conversation um when when he comes back. On the so, other side of yeah. this call. And and, yeah. and you know you, you know you know we talk you know a lot off air. So you know you I remember you telling me that um that you had started a click on your block, right? Right. Now, tell, tell everybody uh, what the name of this click was. Uh, 90th place. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Duck was a 9 0. <laughs> Don't put that out there, the airway, man. <laughs> oh, my God. But yeah, so I was able to relate with him when he talked about the seven one hustler thing because that's the block he grew up on. Right. And when you're young, that's you know you're trying to form a clique, you're trying to fit in. You know you don't know what you're doing. You just name the streets. You ain't knowing that this shit gonna follow you up. Right. 
Right, right, right. <laughs> you will not be charged for this call. Okay. To accept this call, say or dial five. All right. Thank he's, you for using Global Tell he, He's back. So, 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 Lil Dame, I, we were just, uh, we were just talking, right? So, I, I want you to know something, like you know, so, so, yeah, uh, so Michael, like when he was a kid, he did the same thing, like he formed a clique, right, on the block he grew up, right? But he grew up on 90th, right? So he, he formed uh, some clique, you know, the 90th place. What, 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 your 90th place? What, 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 what y'all call yourself? Well, it's like something, the 90th place, something, but 90th place, something. So, so. So your your big homie used to be a nine zero. <laughs> Damn, he wants to put that on record. This he's, he's, I'm gonna have to get him because he wants to put that on record. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now for 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 the listeners who who don't understand why we're, we're why 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 we're joking about that, right? Is that because uh, uh, historically, HRA gangsters and nine O's are are like mortal enemies, right? So exactly. Uh, so like uh, you know, it's it's ironic that one of the 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 most uh, one of the more uh, uh, celebrated HRA gangsters started a clip <laughs> called nine O. So that's a uh, it's kind of kind of ironic. All right, go ahead, go ahead, little Dan. What were you saying? But like you said, everybody comes from somewhere for. They came into that life of being a gangster crib. We all had something before that. And I believe in, in this life, it's a stepping stone, like I was saying about myself. Before I became a gang member, before I became a hustler, I was an outstanding young athlete. And everybody in my family was under the belief that I was going to make it to the NFL because I was a star running back uh, in high school. I, I played running back in Pop Warner. I played third base. In Little League, I played third base, third base in high school. You know, I was in the gym, the boxing gym, ever since I was young. And a lot of people that don't really know my, my story, I come from a good woman. And my mother was fortunate. She was a, she was a RN nurse, in which she was able to provide a good education for me. I never went to public, public school until I got to high school. All my school years, was built in Christian schools. I went to Langston Hughes Academy, the Christian school. I went to Marcus Garvey Elementary School, which I learned Swahili in the fifth grade, fluent from a teacher that I love, Gillian named Dr. Wells. I went to Hardown Christian School. I went to Marie Fay Christian School. So all my, uh, from childhood to like ninth grade, was spent in private schools. But at the same time, being in South Central, I was was able to see the stuff that was going on inside the community, which it's like you got one foot in your front door and you got one foot on the pavement. So you're making a choice. You're seeing, you're seeing all this glamour. You're seeing, you know, these cars. You're seeing these, these dudes with purchase ropes. You're seeing them with, you know, glasses. And, you know, you're seeing them with a pocket full of money. So you being poor. Yes, I, I, I want to go to... I want to go to Grand State. Yes, I want to make it to the Olympics. Yes, I want to go and play baseball and play for the New York Yankees. That was my favorite team. But at the same time, I'm seeing individuals that's a little bit older than me that's having money. So what happened, the gravitation from the, from the streets pulled me. And I got caught up in the streets. Even though I was still going to school, I was still on honor roll, I was still respecting my mother wish, going to school and things of that nature. But I was getting pulled into that other lifestyle, and that other lifestyle was more stronger than the lifestyle that I really wanted for myself. And that's how I got pulled all the way in. All right. So I want I want to ask him a question because sure. I went through uh, a similar thing. I think uh, I talked about that with you, Ascari, where I was into the sports real tough, but then a, a turning point came to where. I got pulled into the gangs. So I want to ask uh, Damien, um, what do you think it was that made the gang, the pull towards the gang more stronger than the pull towards your dream to be a professional athlete? What do you think it was that made that gang thing more stronger or the uh, street, the uh, criminal lifestyle more stronger? You, you can see the unity in the streets firsthand. It wasn't no real unity on the football.
football field. It wasn't real unity on a baseball field, but it was in the streets. You see individuals that that's 18, 19 years old jumping up in practices like Jeepo and uh, Cheese and them on, on, on dating the roads or dating in laces. And they got on feet of coach with, with, or they got on boxer coach, I mean, a uh, bomber coach with furs. And, you know, they got on jewels and all that way back in the early 80s. So that was the pull. That was that was the point right. that snatched me with them. Because on playing football, you wouldn't hear nobody pulling up in no cars or on, on days or on phones with loud music. All right. All right. CFO, bumping Houdini, bumping Ed B, and these dudes just a little bit older than me. I said, nah, I got I to gotta go in, even though my mother provided for me. My mother always gave me whatever I wanted. So right. uh, people use excuses that they came from a messed up home, and that's the reason they went to the streets. That didn't happen to me. I come from a very good home, a very strong, structured family with my mama, my uncles, my grandmama, and all them. I chose to go out like there and was so cold about it. My big brother was in prison at that time, big football. He used to call from old folks in prison, the prison that I'm in right now, and tell me to stay away from that. But I wouldn't right. I, I, I didn't, didn't hear what he was saying. When he right. had been through, but he knew what, what I was setting myself up for. But so, based on I didn't listen, I ended up in the with the fellas. Right. right. I yeah, that, that, that speaks to the to, to that, that that question about the environment, right? That that irrespective of how um you know good you are at parenting, if right. you're you are in an environment where a, right. <laughs> if the you're, people are going you're, wild, you're exposing them wild. to this stuff. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I had a um, go ahead. And, and, and at one time, I blamed y'all. I, I blamed the agents for gangsters for destroying my life at one time because the things that y'all had taught me, it was not beneficial. It was very detrimental to what I was being taught by a lot of the loved ones. And the thing about me, I had an opportunity to spend a lot of time with a lot of older homies because on the North, Oak was like one of the first baby homies over there, if anybody know the history of the North. Oak was like one of the more. Then came me, I mean, Snowman and so forth, then me. But Snowman and Oak was in jail. So I had the opportunity to be in a car with people like Lil Spike, Big Goofy, Mad Bone, Big Gangster Brown, Big Devil, Big Shadow, you know, and so forth. So I had, I had, I had, to, I had the opportunity to be around these, these individuals. But if I had to name two people that I really patterned my gangster equipment behind when I got older, it was Big Crazy D and Big Mad Bone. And, and, mm. Big, and, and, and Lil Spike. Because them four I spent a lot of time with doing different things. When D, when D went to jail, I was with Goofy. Spike got out. I was with Spike. Well, if Goofy would go to jail, I would be with I would be with Spike. Then Mad Bone came home from this case. I was with Bone, and I was with Bone for for for, for a lot of time. And I, I tell anybody, you know, even though a lot of stuff has bothered me over the years, Bone like put the, the finishing touches on me when it came to gangster clipping. I have to admit that, regardless of how I feel or uh, what I think. That man put the finishing touches on me and made me an ultimate gangster. When, when, when he took his arm from around my shoulder and told me the, the streets is yours, I support you. And I went out there and it, it was coming in, but I had the opportunity to be with all these dudes that I consider today, especially uh, uh, Lil Spike and Big Goofy, them dudes is general in my eyes. And, even though my reputation supersede a lot of other people's reputation, even a lot of homies, especially older homies, I would never pull the rug from up under their feet. I would always pay homage, even though I'm not in that light. I would always give them that respect because y'all are some of the dudes that paved the way. And I'm going to always respect that. I would never allow my ego to overpower my common sense and feel like I did all this and I made this on my own. No. 
it was a, it was a, it was a line, it was a command, it was a chain of command, and I followed orders, and I always tell anybody, in order to be a good general, you got to be a good soldier first, and I don't even consider myself to be a general in that lifestyle. To me, I'm still a soldier. That's it. But I'm a soldier for a lot, but I would never forget about where I came from. And what I do as I fix myself, I reach back out to my loved ones, and let's hope we can all fix ourselves together and become better men. Yeah, I, I, w I was talking to Master Kui about that one time about, uh, you know, I, I told him, I said, I said, like, you know, I mean, we were talking, so we, we were having a conversation. But in the course of that conversation, I was saying, like, you know, they got homies out, out there that done way more than you've been done, right? And nobody knows their names. Like, nobody, they, nobody, they, nobody knows their name. But, I mean, we know their names, like, in the set. But, like, nobody, like, like nobody outside the set knows their names. But they got homies. He's like, no, he said, for real, there's, there's, there's homies that didn't put in way more work than I didn't put in. Um, because that happens sometimes that people just get names um through circumstances right and i have to imagine that that that, that the florence and normandy incident had to um, uh, impact your ability to, to to um to elevate your name like you 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 go into the penitentiary you're famous you're literally world famous when you walk into the penitentiary all the cops know who you are all the inmates know who you are so that had to be a, a, a some some impact in when you putting your gangster on on a yard um it, it, the, the name gets elevated just immediately because it, it's already known um and but that happens with a lot of people for different reasons people's uh, names get elevated for various reasons but the truth of the matter is this is that that, that if you become a gangster in anybody's set but particularly in a trade gangster if you become a gangster, you you are making sacrifices um you are sacrificing a piece of your humanity um when you come into this thing um, because you, you give up something that you can never get back. Um, and I don't think that anybody's contribution should be belittled. Um, and I know there'll be people talking about what well, you're talking about a contribution to a gang. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. You know, get over it. Um, yeah, we're talking about the people who that's, that's for, for better or worse. That is the lifestyle that they chose. That's what they did in their life. And yes, um, that's what they, that's what they contribute. Um, and we had to go through whatever we went through to be who we are today. So there are some uh, amazing men who come come up out of the set, right? Doing amazing things. Um, and um, they they again some of those will never they're known their names will never be known, right? People they may not do a podcast, they may not sit on YouTube and and talk, uh, uh, but they their names will never be known. But uh, the contributions are still uh, there. Um, so uh, Dame, let me let me ask you this about. Um, about about when you when you were in the penitentiary right um what impact did uh, have been that guy who who did that to reginald denny have on your 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 the, the people how how did they uh, approach you because of that that kind of fame i was i was embraced so when i when i came to the prison and what's what's funny about it i wasn't just embraced by people out of la i was embraced by the culture. I was embraced by brothers out the Bay Area. I was embraced by brothers that migrated from the South and end up coming to, to California and getting caught up and getting put inside the system. So it was it was a warm embrace. As soon as I walked in, it was it was a lot of love. Uh, it was a, it was a lot of protection. They stole the nature of my crime, and you know, actually, it was not as hard as people may thought it was. When I was younger, it was it was quite easy for me because I already came in with a certain mentality, and being around in the business, it helped me sort some stuff out of my head, and I was able to find answers in certain places that I needed answers to. So it made my you have sixty seconds remaining. It made my transition be done in terms of becoming. The person that I am to think so like I always tell anybody you know one thing about me I keep I love the journey and what I mean I love the struggle I love the stuff that I have to go through in order to get to where I am today because if I didn't go through that ain't no telling what I would have turned out to be so my journey as a soldier has been a journey that I've loved because I've learned a lot I cried a lot I heard it a lot I suffered a lot 
to get to the point that I am today and what I am in a very, very better place in my head and I'm in a very, very good place within my heart. We want to talk about that when you come back, like what, what that journey was, what what it looked like and, and, and so people can start to understand who you are as a, as a man. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that when you, when you, when you get back. Inshallah. Mm. So, um, and, and Michael, like that, 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 that thing that he was talking about that journey, right? Like going through, through, through stuff when we were young. Um, I remember this, you, that wasn't allowed, right? It, it, the, um, the, the, the thought of, uh, of, of, becoming something else wasn't even it wasn't even a thought right you know like you know you know you do or die you know that kind of thing like it, it wasn't allowed it wasn't it wasn't a part of the the the, the, the vocabulary it wasn't a part of how people talk um older homies are now capable of having that kind of conversation right, right. They're, they're, they're capable now of being able to say hey uh you know let's move call, let's move into a different uh arena hold on let me let me let me answer this call from Dave here. The Folsom State Prison, Folsom, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. You have a pre Okay. Thank you for using Global Tell Link. Yep. Oh, why are you something like before, before, before we go, uh, Scarlett, before we go forward, let me let me sure. let me clarify something. Okay. Because right? it's on my heart right now as I speak, and I'm becoming emotional about about this conversation because it's long overdue for me to really open up and bring people into my world because people only have a version of me of what other people say about me. Being a soldier, I was always taught, uh, you don't speak about yourself, people speak about you. That's how you tell the difference between a real one and a fake one. And I just want to say this, and I want to say this with true sincerity, especially when it comes to a tribe, where I come from, the same place y'all come from. Over the years, I had a very, very bad that very bad resentment towards those in the community over there. And over the years, I have said things very degrading about a lot of people that come from over that way because of I feel that I was betrayed, I was let down, uh, people turned their back on me. And so when people who self has known and those that had fallen, what I can see with the fall week, in the later stages of, of the gangsterism, I took that and I ran with it, and I was speaking uh, in negative about these individuals. What I come to learn about transformation, a lot of people start off good and go bad, and a lot of people go bad that's bad and can go good. I say that to say this, man. You dudes over there, now I love y'all sincere. And everything that has transpired in my life, it's because I made that decision. Y'all didn't make the decision to make me an eighth grade gangster. Y'all didn't make the decision for me to go to prison in 1992. Y'all didn't make the decision for me to return back to prison in 2000. I was a poor thinker. And based on I was being a poor thinker, I was blaming the individuals in that neighborhood that I grew up with because I said they poisoned my mind. They had me believing in something that, that in a way of life that I felt I had to give my all to it. And based on I had gave my all to it, and my payment was bullets, stab wounds, and, and a long stretch of time prison. Those in my, in, from my neighborhood didn't do that to me. I did that to myself. And I, want the young, I want these young dudes to know. Nobody can send you somewhere or tell you to do something that you don't want to do. And you do it on your own. And I did it on my own. So Allah knows who I had ill will towards in that community. Allah knows who I said if I ever see again, I was, what I was going to do. But I can say today that I don't got no ill will towards nobody over there in that community. Even though I'm in my own lane and I'm living a productive life, that was the point that I had to make. So I salute those that raised me over there. And whatever you're doing in this lifetime, if it's good or bad, that's not between me and them. That's between them and Allah, because that's who they got the answer to 
on the day of judgment about why they did what they did and when they did it. That's not for me to question. But I want in my community, I want healing. Mm-hmm. I want to really start loving each other again and really being sincere, honorable towards each other. Why do we got to die young? Why do we got to sit in prison with these Why do our family members got to be out there in society without us? Because we're not thinking correctly. I was not a correct thinker, so I put myself in, in, in bondage. Nobody did that. Bone didn't do it. Monster didn't do it. Big Goof didn't do it. Spike didn't do it. None of them older loved ones did this to me. I did it to myself, and that's what we have to realize. So, at the same time, I asked mercy for the wrong that I did. I asked a lot to have mercy for them because what y'all taught me is only what y'all knew from somebody else. This damage and this, this bad information is something that's being handed down. My community, those that I grew up with, I'm asking y'all, who is the narrative? Because it's not easy during this time. It's not. I don't know if my mother going to be alive when I get out. I don't know these things, but what I can do is be the better man today so my mother has the opportunity to smile and say, it don't matter how my son started, it's how he ended. So I forgive my tribal members today. I love all y'all, but I just want y'all to know, man, it's a better way. And, and I'm saying this with sincerity. We need to really, really come to the round table and fix some things correctly. So when we do leave this world, we leave it in a better place because when we came into this world, it was love in that community. We the ones that snatched the love up out of there with all that snaking, that backbiting, that slander, and we grown men that fix it. And I'm on the front line that fix it for what's for right for us right now. And by me fixing it, one of the biggest things I had to do, I had to forgive y'all because y'all didn't do me wrong. I did myself wrong, and I take full accountability. Thank you for letting me say that, Aspar. Thank sure. you for letting me say that, thank you. And I love y'all mm-hmm. for the sake of a lot. And I'm sincerely love y'all, even though I'm emotional. But it, it's, it's, a, it's an emotion that's happy. It's not an emotion out of anger. It's out of happiness. It's just out of freedom. I know what freedom feels like. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not turning down to my dad's soul. I'm not blaming nobody. One of the things that you know, like even 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 when we go to the park now and, and we there with with the homies and the older homies, you you when you hear them talk about their children, right? When you hear they're talking about, they're bragging about their children being able to accomplish this or accomplish that. My my my, my boy is doing this, my daughter's doing blah blah blah, right? Nobody um, truly wants. We we were just young, we were dumb, we were stupid, we were you know we we had all kind of crazy stuff going on, but nobody truly wants this for their children, right? You know, I, I did 27 years on that last joke. I did six years in YA, four years in the pen before that, before before I went to, uh, before I did that 27. You know, it's, it's I, I spent a lot of my life locked up uh, in, in these people's places. Um, and I I don't want that for anybody else. I don't want that for no young homie. I'd rather see a young homie man figuring out how to way to get, you know, get somewhere and be successful. Um, if I can provide that, then that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, there, are, there will be people who don't want that. There will be people, there will be people that don't want you doing that. And that's fine. You know, that, that, that's, that is what it is. But, um, I want to be, I want to be the dude who can, uh, be able to provide for our tribe, our community, um, opportunity. Like on here on Gangster Gangster, bringing in guests who are going to tell people how to get into trades, people how to, um, get their bank accounts set up. How to fix their credit? We'll be we'll have it all these these kind of guests on to tell people you know, what you can do to, to to move your life forward. People want to stay out of prison. You know, one thing is, is crazy about prison is this: is that we fight. We 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 we'll, we'll come out. The, we'll get out the penitentiary and 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 fight headlong to get back up in there real quick. And then the first thing we want to do is run in the law library or go get a legal beagle to get back out. But when we're out, you know, we, we oftentimes just running right back into the back into the, the, the handcuffs you know and i, I want to change that i do want to i want to change that narrative 
yeah, we don't do the correct work, man. And I just take you my own personal experience is that you so messed up in your head that you will live your own life. You know you need help. You know you need answers. You know you need to find solutions to your problems and you choose not to when you come, when you come to prison. So what we do, we put a band-aid on a wound that's so deep. We don't really fix it. So when we go back to society, we actually come out worse than when we went in and we really didn't do the proper work on ourselves. I told a lot in 2014 at Calipatra State Prison, L214, Building 5, do not let me out of prison if I'm not right. I do not want to come back to society if my mind's not right. Because what we have to realize, Ascari and Duck, football was my biggest enemy. Football tried to kill me. Football sent me to prison, football got me shot, football got me told on, football came me a riot, all types of stuff trying to be football. You know how hard it had to be to be football, but it wasn't. But do you think if I could have been Dane? This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Things would have been a lot different, but I chose to be somebody. And in order to be football, I had to live a dangerous, out of control life. And, uh, and when you live that type of lifestyle, you're going to spend more time in prison or the graveyard than you do your own neighborhood that you represent. Believe that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a part of that's the one of the things we want to get to. That's a part of being a gangster that you're going to spend more time in prison than on your, in your, on your set. If you if your gangster is is up there, you you're you're absolutely going to spend more time in prison than on your set. Ex there, there are some exceptions where that you know where, where where people were able to get away without without doing that, but for the most part, that's what happens in everybody's life. You're going to spend more time away from your mother, your father, your children, your your sister, your brother, than you will with them because that's what becoming a gang member requires of you. If you want to be a full fledged gang member, then the set has to matter more than mom it has to matter more than your kids it has to matter more than everything because when it's time for to, to, to do what you got to do out there ain't no homies trying to hear my mama said i can't i can't go tonight my mama said uh i gotta i i can't i can't go to the park my mama said i can't you know uh my my, my, my wife don't my, my kids is got a uh uh you know a, a birthday party and it, so uh, y'all go, y'all go, you know, risk your life tonight, you know, because I can't go. It's it just, it's just, it's just, it, it is, like you said, but it, it, it's insidious and it, it, and it requires a lot of you. It takes a lot of things from you. Um, this is the first time in history. Before you go, it's quiet. There's four places you're going to spend a lot of time in. You're either going to be physically in jail or you're going to be a physically dead person in the grave. Mentally, you're going to be dead. Mentally, you're gonna be in prison if you got that wrong time press like oxygen. Somehow, some way you're doing time. Somehow, some way you dying. How can we free ourselves from dying from an early death? How can we free how can we free ourselves from going to prison and spending a long stretch up in there like I'm doing, like you did and like baby death doing? Or how can we stop being in prison inside our head, making all these bad mistakes and putting ourselves in a line of fire? So we have to really do, we have to work from the inside out. And that's what I had to do to myself. Once I looked at the mirror and I seen my face and I was dissatisfied, I said, look, it's about me. I got to fix me. Ain't nobody else fix you but you. And if you want to sit there and continue to lie to yourself and you want to be this hardcore gangster, you want to be stumped down, you want to put that blue rag in your pocket, you want to be known, you set yourself up for a bad trap. Anybody gonna tell you that with common sense once they've been through what we've been through. But like I say, some of the loved ones, they still want to represent it. They want to they go through the trials and tribulations. Tri trials and tribulations. I'm not going to tell you not to, but I'm going to tell you the truth when you're around me. And that's what I do that, since I've been in the system, since I got my life together. It's more younger loved ones in prison that's with me now within the last 10 years. And, and Doug can bear witness to this like GS and Hitman and all them. Them little dudes got college degrees up in here now. They working on AA degrees. They got high school diplomas because I was able to change the narrative because we had a meeting on the yard in 2014. We was trying to go into 2015. And I told them, 
I said, I failed y'all. They said, what you mean? I said, I'm going to tell y'all something. And I said, it was like 30-something gangsters at the gate from everywhere. I said, if y'all want to become better gangster clips, y'all need to leave, leave this gate. I said, but if y'all want to become better men, y'all need to stay at this gate. I swear by a lot, they all stayed at the gate. And that's when all of us as a whole, we start making that change for the better. The little loved ones, they still represent that GC to the fullest, but they educate themselves. So when they do go back to society, they got the skills in order to stay out there instead of coming back. You know, we have 60 seconds remaining. Over the years, I've talked to them, and they always ask me, what do you need? I said, I already got my Oscar award by y'all staying out there in the streets. What's up, Michael? Go ahead, baby. Excuse me. Now, the only thing I was going to say is something that you said, Ascari. Remember what you said about it's not about abandonment? By evolution, yeah. Exactly. Right. It's not about right. abandonment. It's about evolution. Right. You know? Right. So that, that's a good point. You know? Yeah. These guys are still loved ones, so we don't want to abandon them. We want to help them to evolve. Right, right. Because and, and, and we can't. How do you get the truth and, get the truth and run away from your people? You're supposed to get the truth and go back to your people. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. And that's what I'm doing. That's why, that's why even though I, I love a lot, I'm off. And you know, the thing that, um, the thing, the thing is, the truth of the matter is that we, we can't, um there is no ability to abandon being a, being a gangster you've been a gangster long enough it's in you right um right. and you might go run run to find some other place to be some other uh, uh you know place to to basically hide in because you you but the reality is that um that's in you right um and if you recognize that then you, I, for me i recognize a responsibility you know, like I used to tell people, like, you know, the reason that I am the way I am is because um, I recognize that I put some evil in the world. Right. Um, even though others may not uh, recognize it, you know, um, he's calling back. Hold on. Yeah, but that's why uh, Gangster Gangster, this uh, platform you created, that's why it's so important, sorry, because it gets to the truth, it gets to the real. You're talking to uh, guys, you know, very bad for the dudes back in their day, and uh, these dudes just made the change in their life. Uh, this platform is very good. And, and, and I want people to know you know, I want people to know that it's possible to to do that. Thank right? you for using that. I don't care link. who you were and, and what you did on the streets, because like like we know, like baby duck, we know who you are, right? Um, and everybody in the set knows who you are, um, uh, and what you was about, right? Like you know, you, like you 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 you're at the top tier, um, of names mentioned, you know, in, in the set, and because of what you did out there. Right. Um, and you, you yourself, yourself made that transformation. You like you, you, you transform from that guy and said, OK, I have to grow up and I have to do something different. The reality is that um, when we out the park, you know, when, when, when the homie uh, evil put together those, uh, um, those, 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 those banquets we go to and, 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 and we, we, all the homies are there and you're seeing everybody and enjoying, uh, you know, being around folks that you ain't seen in 30 years or sometimes. Um, the, the reality is that is that there is a love, there's a camaraderie, and there's a there's a people might figure it or see it as hypocrisy even, right? That 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 we are connected to the men and women who um are in it were in that lifestyle and we're connected for that reason, right? Because we all share that common uh, um you know history of this is what it was, this is what we grew up in, this is what we we we, we, we had. We forged bonds with each other through through the struggles that we went through. Through yeah. whatever we was going through in life, uh, we was able to get through those things with each other. Each other were our, our support. Even though it might have been a negative support at that time, we supported each other through some very difficult times. When didn't nobody when we felt nobody else understood us or we felt the whole world was against us we was able to find that support within each other. So that don't go away. 
just because you have evolved and become a different person, that don't mean you're not going to still love that other person that maybe haven't reached the level of evolvement that you have reached, you know? So it, we, we, we forge bonds with each other that probably would never go away. Can't, can't never be broken. Right. You know, it can never be broken. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, we'll talk about this in another episode about the parallels between being a gangbanger and a war fighter. Uh, but that's just, it's the same thing, right? You know, you when you out there in the trenches, it's dudes. You know, I, I, I was telling my wife the other day, man, like, you know, I like that dude, and I ain't gonna mention his name. I said, that's the dude I want standing next to me in, in the trenches, right? I said, look, yeah. you know, and I ain't talking about because you know, he's a big old dude. I was like, not because he's a big old dude, but I'm saying this dude right here, man, like, that's yeah. the dude. If, if, if we go in it, I want him right next to me, you know, um, and. And that's true. That's the truth, you know. All right, all right. hey, little Damon, because you know you. This is your interviews. We want want you in here um, to continue to it's speak your truth. It's our energy. <laughs> um, yeah. So um uh, um, we, so you like I said, you were you were in prison. You 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 um you 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 became a a. I don't what would you what you call it? I don't know. I, I don't want to use the word shot caller because that's not the word we use, right? You know, but you know that's. For the, for the people who might not be familiar with our culture, right? Like, well, you became like a shot caller, right? You became a shot caller. You became... I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a say it like this. He had the keys. You had the keys, right? That's what we say. That's those... Are, I, I know people... Some people were listening like, what the hell does that mean? But you had the keys, right? <laughs> you, you had the keys to the cars when you when you, when you you were uh, you were on the yards, right? So, um, now... And, and real, what, and real, real quick, I want to add some more story. Sure. Uh, Lil Ball is one of the people that helped me go home. I have told many of people, as soon as I came on the yard with Lil Ball, he told me, he said, hey, big homie, kick back. You don't have to do nothing. I got it. I, I mean, he just don't know how thankful I was to him because I was tired at that time. You know, yeah. so I, I just want to tell you, thank you very much, Ball. You you one of the people that helped me get to where I'm at right now. That, that makes me want to pivot and ask you a question. Um, so this is what I want to ask you. Um, because you were you were you were the top echelon of of, of, of gangsterism in, in the penitentiary, right? You your name was the one that was ringing bells all over the place, right? Like baby duck, baby duck, baby duck. Um, you said you got tired, right? And I know what yeah. I know how I know how that feels. So now, so you know, I, I know what you mean when you say that. So, but explain to the people who are listening what that means. Like when you what what happens when you are high level for so long. That that you know that everybody expects everything from you. You give give it, you give it, and you start to see that you're not necessarily getting back the the, the what you what you what you feel like you putting out. Like you you putting out your heart. You like you willing to go out there every day and die on the yard. You know for this thing, and then the cash is around you. Then not so much. Um, what does that feel like, and what does it do to you over time? It's it's exhausting. It's you, know, you have to keep Word. pushing, you know, and you judged off what you're doing today. You're not judged off what you did, what you know, last year or two years ago. You're judged off what you're still doing today, you know, so you still have to keep pushing and it, it become exhausting. You know, a lot of people be wanting to have the keys as we call it, a lot of people want the keys on the yard or whatever, but they don't understand how difficult it is to have when you have people uh, who don't like you or hating on you for one reason or another. So it's very exhausting, you know, so that's, you get wore down. You, you cannot continue this forever. Believe me, I know it. You get wore down. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, yeah. It's just basically exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Okay. Oh, now what was you? What were you saying, Dane? You know, I was prepared to that position. I I don't like to call it the key. I call it a position of trust because to me, your loved one's lives is in your hands, and in order to be an effective person in that position of trust, you have to do a lot of self-sacrificing in order to make the machine run correctly when you're on them yards, because at any given time, them yards, we all know, can turn bad and things can happen where it's a great possibility if we up under the wrong gun power, we're liable to get our head blown by that many 14 and mm -hmm. our loved one 
uh, would return home to his family, not walking, but in a body bag. So when I was given the position of trust from the older loved ones, such as Quack and, and, and Big P and all them, as I was going through that trip, as I was going through the process of trying to make sure we remain solid and we remain family, that's when my Islamic lifestyle played a role because I was able to see how Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, dealt with the companions. And I seen the genuine love that Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, gave to the companions. And I took that same format and I gave it to the loved ones on the yard with, that was on the yard with me. And when you understand the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he was the, he was the one that was foremost in the battle. And Duck can bear witness to this. And Duck had told me at times, why are you always going? I always went for two reasons. One, I wanted to be that, that, that example of what it is to be fearless. Two, is that I didn't have confidence in a lot of the loved ones at that time that was on the yard with me because a lot of them have never been battle tested. They haven't really been in the training grounds where you really, there's no more guns up in there. You only got two things. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. You got your hands in your feet. So by me being in that position, I want to show them how not to just be a warrior, but I want to show them how to be a thinker as well. And a lot of times I made good decisions and I made bad decisions. But when Duck came, I was able to pick Duck brain. And like I said, if you know warfare, you don't ask a five-star general to be on the front line. You can, you let him sit back. And you go back to him for the advice that is needed in order to move our family forward. And that's what, what I utilized Doug for. I utilized his brain. He was still a part of, of, of the battlefield, but it was, in, it was under a different job description. It was being our teacher because he had already had so much experience of being in the stoops. And, and I'm grateful for when he came because he taught me a lot. He, you taught me how to be patient. Him and Chico and P and certain people that I was in constant communication with, they told me how to move our family in, in, in a better way. And, and one thing I always told the circle, even though I was in that position of trust and I, and I was known to be the number one man, I've always told them, I'm not above this, I'm a part of this. So when I'm a part of this, I'm not gonna base this decision on what I feel. I'm gonna bring everybody to the table and we're gonna make a collective vote. So if the vote, was yes, okay, we act on it. But if the vote was no, we stand down. So going through that going through that process of, of being in that position of trust, I always wanted better for us. And sometimes I push better for the loved one more than it did for myself. And that's yourself. so long to get my life together because because I was so much so, so much concerned about my loved ones, especially the younger ones that had came to the system for thirty or forty years. I didn't want them abused. I didn't want them to be misled. I didn't want them to turn their 30 years into a life sentence. I don't believe uh, a person with 20 years should be going out there on a mission. I believe the person with the life sentence should go out there because the person with 20 years got an opportunity to go home. He can do some of the small stuff, but I don't think he should take on a big, big task. That's just my belief back then. But at the end of the day, we shouldn't have been doing none of it. Our, our whole process, state of mind was so messed up. We both just been really trying to work on to get back out there to our family. But like they say, we don't know better, you don't do better. Well, so, but, but yes, I had the position to trust. And I hope that I, I was able to do a good a good job in that position. And years later, I believe I have to come over the years. So many loved ones, not just from that gangster car, but from every other place that I had the opportunity to sit down with and tell me how much I've influenced them to do what's right. So, you know, it's a home a lot. Like I told y'all yesterday, the other day when we was talking, I believe it was already decreed for me to go through these trials and tribulations. And what I've gone through, it would never mount up to what Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, so would it, from his it would never yeah. mount up to what our ancestors have gone through uh, on the slave land trade, and it would never mount up to what the first generation of a trade had to go through. Y'all, they had a real war going on that first generation and that second generation. So when I look at all this, I said, okay, what's the end game? The end game at the end of the day is that 
can we all become better men? Can we all live a productive life? So when we do leave here, we can leave here with a smile on our face. A lot of times, a lot of dudes, uh, young dudes and older dudes actually the football. Uh, you know, what they going to feel about you when you're dead? I said, I don't look for the praise of mankind no more. I just look for the grace and mercy of Allah. So, and, and you know what I mean by that story. I don't want the cats on the back from the people. I just want to make sure whatever I give to you now from this day forward is something that's beneficial and it's not right. something that's detrimental. I'm not going to tell you to run across the yard with me no more and let's keep back it. I'm not going to tell you, you know, move this to this point to that point. Like I was telling Tony Spider just recently, he was upset because uh, they denied him at the board. And I told him, I said, did you do all this work to appease the board? Or did you do oh, all this work? For yourself. Exactly. I said, if you did if you did it to better your, if you did it to better yourself, Tony Spider, you shouldn't be mad at denial. The board is not denying you. A lot is denying you because you right. still have work to do. I said, so be exactly. honest. He said, yeah, I still got some stuff I need to fix it with myself. Right. I said, that's what I'm here for, you know. I, Just like when the school big hey. went to the board and he would deny, he would deny the board. Squally, Squally needed a piece of paper. So I, I, I told the phone. I wish y'all able to sit around here, around here with Squally and didn't know that he needed one piece of paper to get a parole date. I said, y'all wrong. That's because we don't know how to love each other correctly. You'll, you'll, you'll send me on a mission and send me to the shoot program, but you won't go down and sit in a line law berry with me and help me learn this math so I can get this piece of paperwork so I can go home. And I told him, I said, y'all, need, we need to learn how to love each other better. I think we knew that as it's done down against the camp. I learned that through my both and my development as a Muslim and as a man, that we really need to love each other the correct way. So yes, I wish I had these same skills back then, because if I did, we would have been in a better place. We probably would have been millionaires this afternoon. You have 60 seconds remaining. That, that's what one thing I, I, where, I where, learned where, about. Go ahead, now, I want to uh, say something real quick. I was, uh, that's one thing I learned is that you have positive support and you got negative support. And we need to start giving more positive support. Because growing up, that's all we got was negative support. Like when we did something negative, we got the pat on the back. Yeah, you down, you with it. But now when we're doing the positive thing, we need that pat on the back. When we going to school, when we taking this trade, we need to be like, yeah, you're doing the right thing. Yeah, keep doing that. So I see what you're saying, little ball, when you're talking about learning how to love each other better. It's really about that support, learning how to give people, uh, give each other positive support instead of that negative support. Right. And, and that that, that also where I'm at right there. that also brings to mind is this this the 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 kind of problematic insidious nature of prison is that um there there are times oftentimes you don't get to you don't get to decide what is good or evil like you know he was talking about he's trying to make the better best decision for the tribe when he's making decisions sometimes the decision you got to make is terrible for yeah. everybody because that's the place right, right. So that there is no kind of real decision to make right like you either y'all y'all gonna be down y'all gonna mark out like that <laughs> y'all gonna be a bunch of hooks you gonna be a bunch of hooks you know <laughs> you dudes gonna run rush out over y'all or y'all gonna go out right um, right. and um that's 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 the problem sometimes with um with with prison and 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 that's one of the things that need to be talked about, right? Is that hey, um, one of the things that happens in prison. Hold on, let me. He's coming back in. You yeah. have a prison yeah. call. Yeah, you one of the things that happens in prison to accept this call, say or dial is is that um is that you gotta you gotta conform to the You you have to conform to the um to the to the norms of prison. And sometimes that means making really bad choices and bad decisions um, and you have no say so about it. Right. So there are times when, you know, you want to if, if you wanted to appeal to your better angels, that's not going to happen because the result of that. Right. Um, would be uh, um, super, super bad for you if you if you were to decide to be a better human being in prison. Seriously. I mean, you, you could get yourself or somebody else killed. You know, but 
and that's that's kind of like where our faith come in. Right. You know, where we have to kind of like some of the some of the things we have to put it in, as y'all would say, our law hands, as I would say, in God hands. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just a, a difficult situation either way you go. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, all of us have all of us have, have, have been commanders. All of us have stood for the command. Um, and and um, and so we know that that difficult weight of having to make decisions about going out on that yard and doing things. And like I was saying in one of the other episodes, like in California, we live under the gun. Right. Like uh, I think there's only one other state, one or two other states that do that. But we live under the gun everywhere. We're under the gun. You on the you on the yard, you're under the gun. You in the chow hall, you're under the gun. You in your housing unit, you're under the gun. It's you know, um, people who, who are not familiar with prison might 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 look at TV and think that that everybody lives like that, but only California and a couple of other states do. But you do live like that in California, and that means when you go out and act and and, and you go out and, and 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 when you send people to go out and do something, you're literally um, risking their life, right? You're you're literally saying, and you have to make that decision. Um, and sometimes that decision, uh, um, is, um, is, is the only decision to be made. Right. Um, you know, I, I had a thing when, whenever I stood for the command was that every engagement, every initial engagement under my, uh, command was, was mine. Um, that, that was because when I sent you, I, I meant you to go, right. Um, if, 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 if I say go, I meant you to go and you're going to go, or we're going to, you know, we'll go to that next thing. So I always took the first engagement, right? That was always a thing. I was, I was, so it wasn't that I was front line. It was just that, look, I believe that, um, that, that commanders should, uh, um, you know, the people should, the, the, under somebody's command should know that the, the commander is actually willing to do everything that they're, they're ordering you to do. Um, and that always gets you, you know, that got, you, got me in a lot of trouble, you know, a lot of that, but that's, but that's prison. That's what I'm saying. It's not, it wasn't the choice I, I I would would have wanted to make, but it was the, it was where I was. I, it's what I understood to be correct, and that's that's why I made those choices. And sometimes um they 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 were to my detriment, but that's just that's prison. You can't always get the the, the warm and fuzzy in that place. Uh, go 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 ahead, uh, uh, Mujahid. Yeah, and, and then we got to remember though we had the opportunity to study the art of war. A lot, all three of us, and we understood the role. A, a, a person that's what we consider a general, a leader, or a position of trust. Sun Tzu said this in the art of war. He said the best general is not the one that ride on the horse while his soldiers walk through the mud. The best general is the one that get off his horse and walk through the mud with his soldier. So what that means is that the general is going to lead the charge. And then in and, and the process, your soldiers going to come behind you. So when I think about this, you know, a lot of people still have a lot of love for me, and a lot of still people want to put me in, in certain positions. So my thing is now to use this position to bring out the best and not the worst in the individual. And one of the things I have to do to bring out the best, I have to make sure that I'm living exactly what I'm telling them. And that's where we go wrong with this failed leadership today. They calling people to righteous, righteousness, but behind closed doors, they're hypocrites. Then uh, when the truth come out about these individuals, it's damaging to your soldiers because your soldiers believe in you. And, and, right. and, and they believed in you to the point where they was willing to do any and everything for you. And but all actuality, behind closed doors, you're a piece of shit. Straight up, let's right. call it what we're going to call it. So one thing I, in one of the books, uh, 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 of course, and you're familiar with it too, it's called the Slave Revolt of Bahia by Sheikh Uthman Danfolio in the early 1800s. This was an African scholar. And one thing that he said that I've always lived by when I when I caught on to what he was saying, you have to put the right people in the right positions. Based on putting the right people in the right positions, you're able to be more effective as a whole. In the communities today where we come from, the right people is not in the right positions. So that's why we're not getting the right outcomes. So we have to do some self-evaluations. Plus, the big piece that wonder, everybody don't deserve a voice. You even told me that, Big Doug. Some people's opinion not, is not even needed, especially if we know these individuals 
is not brilliant inside their head. Would you let a crackhead lead you to the army, to the battlefield? No. Would you let an alcoholic lead you to war? No. Would you lead, Would you let a coward tell you we got to go do this? You know he don't got it in you? No. But what we do today, we go along and get along, and that's why our results as a, as, a, as a people in our community is so bad because we don't want to support each other the correct way. But how can I support you the correct way and you're not giving me the vision? You're not showing me where we hit it. But what you're doing is a whole bunch of unnecessary screaming and hollering and shouting. So I've learned through trial and error. I've seen the good and bad in everybody. So what I do with y'all, I held on to the good and I removed the bad. Because all y'all had good qualities in you. But I had to recognize the good quality and hold on to them in order to try to make us a better collective. Because it's never about I. It was never about I with our ancestors. It was never about I in Islam. It's always about us. How can us get better? And so, and that's what we need. Not we are the chosen few. How can all of us get better? And the only way we can all get better, you got to have a lot of self-love first. And then when you have that self-love, you allow your love to be manifested through your actions and your deeds, through your good morals and through your good values and through your honor and your integrity. We lost all of that. We need to get that back. And that's how we bring that universal change, not just within our community, all throughout the region. Because in every ghetto, and especially in South Central, everybody's suffering because everybody and ate from the same bad tree. We all got a bunch of poison that we ain't up, we ain't chewed on. So let's get the poison out. Let's come up with some new ideas. Let's come up with some better leadership skills. Let's have some genuine love for each other. Because at the end of the day, we all we got. That's what you always say, baby girl. We all we got. So and if we all we got, why we can't make sure that everybody is, is, is doing their best that they can do at this particular time in my life? All right. All right. Yeah, so we're approaching the the the, the time where we're going to have to... We don't want the, the broadcast to go too long. So um, the next time we come on, is, what, what I want to talk to you about is um, you, you're in prison now. Um, you, you, um, Many people still think you're in prison for what happened in 1992. Um, uh, that's not the case. You 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 actually paroled uh, from that um, and then went back to prison. Um, and I want to talk to talk to you about that. Your 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 um, because it's actually um, kind of fascinating the the, the whole story um, about that. Um, we didn't get into the Edie Fall stuff and all of that. You know and you know I know things. I'm not gonna we're not gonna talk about it. But I I, I, I wish we could. But that because that stuff is like I I it's like soap opera stuff. Like what? Like what you mean? You know. But we're not gonna get into any of that. But uh. Just to say that there's there, there's a story with all with everybody, right? So everybody that was involved uh in in in, in little football's you know life and case is a story, I guess, with everybody. Um uh now uh <laughs> you know, hey, sorry, I'm I'm like a good I'm like a good uh a bowl of uh gumbo from New Orleans. I got a mixture of everything. But you got yeah, all kind of mixes, because, boy. If 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 if, yeah, if, so if they only knew in, in Islam, <laughs> Blood, fairy, everybody, and, and gave me a spoon, and I, I ate from a lot of people, good people table. So, and I'm grateful for that love because nobody didn't push me away. I was always embraced with with a genuine embrace, and a lot of these dudes, I was able to sit among and get a, a lot of valuable information, which is a part of me today. And like I, said, I, I'm, like I said, I'm like I said, I'm gumbo. That's I'm gonna make sure of everything. Put you in your mouth. I'm good to you, baby. That's right. And so when you when we come back in the next time we next time we do a, a, an interview, I, I want to talk about, um, you know, you, you being in prison now and um, uh, uh, what happened there, you know, and what broad strokes. We don't need to, you know, get into the macular detail um, or micro detail, I should say. Um, but yeah, um, we'll, we'll talk about that so that people have an understanding of, of you know, what's going on, where you were, where you are now. Um, so the next time we ever are able to do an interview, and I don't know when this one is going to air, it won't air like right after we're not, this, this absolutely will not be airing right after the one we just did that we, that we put up. Um, cause you want to give people time to, you know, absorb that. And then there'll be some interviews in between that with other people. And then we'll, we'll throw this one up. We'll throw it in the shop, edit it up and put it up there. Um, but, um, I'm going to get my money for my ice cream from you. Oh, oh you, you want some <laughs> hot and dust? He wants some hogging that. <laughs> hey, yeah, you know, you, yeah, they you got, know, they got, they got, they got that good. you know, if we pay you for, you know, if we pay you for this, uh, for, for your interview, we have to disclose that, right? 
So you want us to put a a, a, a banner at the bottom of the thing? We paid this dude an ice cream for the interview. <laughs> <laughs> y'all ain't paying for me. Y'all, hey, y'all not paying for, for the interview. That's just how to love. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna buy me that good, uh, uh, that Rocky Road ice cream. Duck buy me that, that first ball I like. And me and Duck yeah. Like we used to get that to sit on the yard and eat your ice cream till we get dizzy. Hey, all right, <laughs> hell yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I got that. I thought you all that muslim oil on the yard. Yeah. Yeah, he used to get it. Yeah. Little ball, he used to get a, a bang on and he used to pass it out to everybody. You know, he was he, he was always about uh community he was always about family he was always about real homeboyism because a lot of people don't understand what that word means homeboy and homeboyism that's a really deep word when you really get into it but uh it's, it's been lost on a lot of people all right so we're gonna think, uh, cut this one Hey, no, no, hey, hey, Doug, a story worked out with me one time at Cincinnati when he first got on the guard with me. He was hurting so bad, he never came back. He said, yeah. no, no, I ain't doing that anymore. Hey, hey, this dude, hurt. hey, this dude. I know you hurt him, ball. Hey, 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 this dude, look, 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 look. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, I consider myself a machine, right? You know, I'm like, look, I can, I can bust down. I can do my thing, man. This dude. Nah, he got some special stuff oh going my on. Goodness. Hey, look, hey, I don't know what he was thinking, but yeah, that was the last time that was gonna happen. I mean, this yeah. is this, this, something wrong with this dude over here, man. Something wrong with him. Yeah. Hey, 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 but you just you you the same way when you wanted me to learn the Arabic, you made me say the same word 30 times. Oh, wow. and, oh if, not, if not a hundred, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if not a hundred, yeah, That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> moment and I'm so grateful for this podcast and really I hope that uh we able to be a positive uh, influence in somebody's life that that, that, that is the objective some sound right. that is the objective yeah, yeah. trying to make some sound it's not about blowing ourselves up and putting ourselves uh, on no high pedal stool it's about letting you know our suffering letting you know our pain and letting you know our hit exactly. because at the end right. of the day it's about. it's about becoming better men before we lead this world. Right. You know, you're going to have to answer to everything that you've done in this lifetime. So if you think you're bigger than the creator and you think you continue to do what you do and you're going to get away from, with it in this lifetime, we all got to answer to everything we do in that next life. So I ask you young brothers that's listening to this podcast and you elders, that's, that's our age, don't go to the grave with bad deeds because you're going to be. You have 60 seconds remaining. Yeah, in the day, yeah. So, one thing, let's just do better when you know better because at the end of the day, the war, Prophet Muhammad said this, Aki as well. He said, there's two forms of jihad. It's the lesser jihad and the bigger jihad. He said, the bigger jihad is, you, is yourself, the yeah. lesser jihad is the yeah. battlefield. So he said, fight yourself. And yeah. I'm, I, I bear witness, if you fight yourself the correct way, you're going to come out a winner. I. Damien Williams, I, Lil Football, I, Mujahi Al Shakur, I fought myself, and that's why I'm in a better position than I have ever been in my life. Yeah. All right. All right. So there, 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 there you have it, folks. Uh, Good talking to you, little ball. Yeah, yeah. He's he's gone. He uh he, he fell off. But uh, that's uh that's that's another one in the bag. So um, we're going to cut this here because we don't want it to be too long. So this has been Gangster Gangster. I am your host, Oscar Abdul Mutakaman, on behalf of Michael Deacon, Michael Hall over there. <laughs> we're saying. Uh, uh, yeah. I was in the heart of it, where it all happened, in the dark of it, I'm talking all the graphics, do I ever miss a block, man, they all answer, I think it's heaven at the top, till it all crashes, I 